And welcome back to our election night coverage. I'm joined by always as by Dr. Jeff Peterson, the chairman of the UW Eau Claire Political Science Department. Great to have you here. Always a pleasure to be here. All right. So going into this election, it certainly looked like President Wilson was facing an uphill battle for re-election. What's your take on where things are standing right now? Well, I mean, I think it's important to remember that, you know, Wilson was elected in 1912 by uh, a minority of the popular vote because the Republicans split between uh, then President Taft and, Woodrow and uh, uh, Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, if, you know, if they'd stayed together as one party, there's no question that uh, Taft would have won re-election. So Wilson had a pretty uphill battle in front of him because he only had 41 percent of the vote. Uh, coming into this, I think he knew that he had to find a way to attract more voters. The Republican Party had reunified behind uh, Charles Evans Hughes um, after he stepped down from the Supreme Court. Um, and I think that meant Wilson had a, a much bigger challenge. And uh, we'll find out what's happened fairly shortly. So what do you think are some of the major issues in the presidential campaign? Well, I think it's pretty clear that foreign policy has dominated the vast majority of this election. Um, obviously, the Great War is going on in Europe. There's the enormous conflict going on between uh, Germany and uh, France and England. Uh, but, we, you know, you can't forget the revolution going on in Mexico, questions about whether or not we should intervene um, and, and whether or not we should uh, get involved um, in any sort of armed conflicts. Uh, I also think we've seen some domestic policy disputes. Uh, Wilson and Hughes have gone back and forth on the issue of the eight-hour workday and whether or not uh, uh, laborers are entitled to that. Uh, certainly the, the question of whether or not women should have the right to vote uh, continues to come up um, over and over again. And, uh, you know, racial tensions in the South are continuing to grow and both candidates have uh, fairly disparate views on that as well. So, All right. So now we're going to turn to our electoral map. You can see it right here. And let's take a close look at this map. And it appears, Jeff, that this is a very close race. Yeah, it's surprisingly close. I mean, uh, obviously Wilson has done better than he did in 1912. Uh, but I mean, right now it really looks like everything's hinging on what's going to come in from the West Coast. Um, most indications are that uh, we're really going to be looking at the 13 electoral votes in California. Uh, I think it's important to note that uh, Woodrow Wilson, as far as we can tell, uh, won uh, the state of New Hampshire by a um, total of maybe 36 votes out of about 85,000 cast. Um, and there are surprisingly large number of states that are separated by, you know, one or two tenths of a percentage. Uh, but right now, I think we'll be waiting for California to come in and that's going to decide the outcome of the election. 36 votes, another good reminder that every vote matters. Absolutely. Absolutely true. All right. Now we're going to turn to some statewide races for a moment. What stands out to you in terms of these results? Well, I mean, a couple things stand out. First of all, um, obviously, Senator LaFollette uh, cruised, frankly, to a election. Uh, looks like he'll come in between 58 and 59 percent of the vote. Uh, and Emmanuel Phillip has succeeded in uh, hanging on to the governor's office, keeping the office in the hands of the Republican Party. Um, interestingly enough, although it looks like Wilson has done better uh, nationally, um, it appears that his party, the Democrats, are going to lose uh, somewhere between 50 and, tw and 20 seats in the U.S. House, including at least three here in Wisconsin. Um, so, even if he does win re-election, he's going to be facing a Republican majority in the House rather than having the Democratic majority he had before. Um, and finally, I think it's worth noting um, for everyone out there that we have finally elected our first uh, female member of the U.S. House. Jeanette Rankin uh, just won her House race in Montana. We just called it. Um, and that's a, 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 an amazing step forward. Oh, very good for her. Congratulations. Now, given what we don't know quite yet, who's going to win the White House, how would you see the difference in these two candidates governing? Well, I think it's fairly safe to say that Woodrow Wilson is clearly less interested in interventionist policy. I think we're far less likely to end up in a war in Europe if Wilson gets elected as opposed to uh, Hughes getting elected. Um, evidence indicates, you know, what we can tell from Wilson's speeches, he's probably uh, less inclined towards uh, moving on the, the right to vote for women. Um, although, you know, he did recently remarry and his wife Edith has been a, a supporter of suffrage. So it's entirely possible that'll change the dynamic and, you know, gossiping in Washington, D.C. says that Edith, Edith May actually makes a lot of the decisions behind the scenes already. So, you know, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Nothing like some gossip from D.C. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Jeff. And thank you for watching here on WQOW. That's it for our election coverage for now. Stay tuned, though. We have coverage of the World Series, a great game matching up in Game 2. It'll be the Red Sox of Boston against your Brooklyn Robins, Babe Ruth on the mound. He's got a future. I'm telling you, you're going to want to watch out for this kid. Sherry Smith on the mound for the Robins. Make sure you tune in for that game right after this program. Thank you for joining us tonight on WQOW News 18. Election coverage will continue after game two.